one of the sacred and holy blessings of baptism is that it offers us an opportunity to be in relationship for eternity. <laughs> we say that in our baptismal prayers that as the one in being baptized is indeed submerged those three times in flowing water, that death now has no more power over them since they have now died with Christ <laughs> and rose with him. So that's a pretty profound statement and something that we've renewed on our Easter Sunday with the renewal of our baptismal promises, which implies not only what we promised to God to do and not do, but also what God has promised to do for us and is doing for us. And I say one of the great blessings of this is uh, a teaching that we pray in the creed uh, of the communion of saints. Uh, that these saints, St. Anthony, I'd like to call to mind, especially today, Mary Magdalene, who we've been journeying with these days, are not just historical figures, although that, not only we can learn by their life and their actions, we can, but are active now in our lives in ways that will help us to grow as they grew <laughs> in relationship to the risen Jesus. And we hear it here in, in this very reading that Mary had gone to the tomb unexpecting whatever might have been to seem and be the resurrection of Jesus. She was looking for Jesus' dead body. <laughs> and we see her growing a bit as all of a sudden she encounters him and calls him teacher. <laughs> and to the final a moment where she's able to reveal the truth of what was actually happening, that this wasn't a dead body, but Jesus, not only the teacher, but Lord. <laughs> so this was a growth, <laughs> and that sometimes happens over long periods of time in our life, from no faith in the resurrection to partial faith, and to this fullness of faith, which isn't only just a blessing and perhaps a reward for a long life, <laughs> but is speaking a truth about God's fidelity and desire to enliven us in a new way. And I sense that if we pray to Mary Magdalene, not to her, to worship her, of course, but as any saint, St. Anthony, they want us to get there. <laughs> they uh, want to enliven us. They don't want just to intercede between us and God. They want to cheer us on and ask God in their prayers to sustain us, <laughs> to be living so that we can join them <laughs> for all eternity in this relationship of divine love. So that's a movement forward. <laughs> uh, even though we remember, of course, in a special way, but it's always so that what was done on G with Jesus and his commitment to us is actually present to us again, <laughs> represented to us in a way that we can engage with it and grow in relationship with the person that it's all centered upon. <laughs> that's what Mary Magdalene recognized and why she was so impelled to go forward is because she was growing to understand more what the resurrected love of Jesus was doing for her, <laughs> moving her from looking uh, for him at, in, a, in a tomb <laughs> to now celebrating and proclaiming him as risen from the dead, the Lord. So that's a, a, an invitation that we all have, one that I'd like us all to take to heart and ask Mary Magdalene to help us <laughs> Since she did that journey, she went through that and, and is now active in our scriptures so that we can grow and activate our faith in the same way. Hmm. So Mary Magdalene, pray for us, but also encourage us, cheer us on, and help us to grow as you grew uh, so that we might proclaim uh, the good news of Jesus risen from the dead to everyone we meet. Hmm.